Good morning, fish heads. It is morning for me. It is Sunday morning. I think it's the 15th of May, somewhere in there. Pretty sure. I'm um, going to be doing a couple of things today. First and foremost, I want to answer a couple of you guys' questions. Uh, something that's pressing in my mind is a question that one of my subscribers asked about cutting stencils. So we're going to go through that today. I just have a little bit left to paint on these keychains, these fish heads. And then I'll get on, get on the gloves and um, we'll start doing it for real. This is for real too. It's just a quick little project that we're doing for the storefront. Uh, a lot of you guys over the years have been asking for keychains here at Bullshed Swim Baits. So one of the things that we're going to do this year is give those to you. So I'm making up, uh, these are the, the last bit of shad fish heads that we've got. We've got a bunch of gills that are on the clear coat rack right now downstairs. So I just want to finish this real quick. And because this is going to be a stencil oriented spray session, uh, yesterday, if you guys watched the little short on YouTube, you saw that I have added some texture. The I, And I knew there would be a question, and there was, and I probably should have. It's kind of hard in 50 seconds to do, you know, like a whole tutorial. But, yeah, so the question was asked was, do I put on the sand while the clear coat is still wet? Absolutely, yes, because you want it to dry and not come off. So that's a... Uh, that's an answer to a question that's going to be all over the map for the first part of this video as I finish this part up. Um, but what we're doing is I have this little hand cut bullshad stencil, the longhorns that Mike is using now on most of his logos. We still have a lot of OG stuff. But um, basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple more colors on this and then I'm going to come over it and then just shoot some black on it. And it's going to look pretty good. So let me get that set up. So I don't, I don't want the, uh, even the back of the keychains to look real boring. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of secondary color if you can notice, you see that there was uh, a horn already, but uh, quality control. So Mike looked at these and he's like, hey, there was a little bit of a uh, raised area on the back and he wanted them flat. So he put them in, back in the grinder, which is the right thing to do for sure. You can see just a little bit of difference there too. So I'm just going to come over it and, uh, and redo it. Just add just a little bit of coloration here. And then we're going to add some black into this cup. So in reality, you're going to get like a two for one. See me do these little fish heads here. And then we're going to move on to cutting our own stencils. You guys have asked about that and doing a craw because I'm going to be diving right back into swim baits and then um, replicas in the next couple of sessions. So I figured I would do something fun this morning. It's a Sunday morning and I happen to enjoy early mornings by myself here at the shop. Um, now we have been open to the public on Sundays um, fishing season, we don't get a whole lot of traffic because you guys are out on the water. And uh, I think that's a good place for you guys to be on a Sunday. Some of you are tournament fishing and some of you guys are just fun fishing. But um, regardless, so there hadn't been a whole lot of traffic. So we were kind of going back and forth as to whether or not to keep it open on weekends or just do a Monday through Friday. So since I'm in the shop, if people come today... Um, you guys will have already seen this video by the time I've made this decision, or Mike's made this decision, actually. Um, then maybe we'll give Sundays another shot. But if not, that will have been four weeks without traffic on a Sunday. So maybe we should just um, take advice from the Lord and rest on Sundays and have you guys have fun on Sundays. 
and then we'll just keep the shop open Tuesday through Friday like we did this past week. By the way, thank you guys so much for giving us support here at the, uh, the storefront. It's looking pretty spiffy for you guys this time of year. We've got hats, we've got apparel, we've got some fresh threads coming, we've got a lot of cool ideas. Um, Jared up north, Ryan and myself down here. Um, some pretty cool stuff that I'm excited about rolling out. And of course, almost 1,200 different custom painted swim baits for you guys here at Bullshad. We've got burritos over there, we've got old Wilbur here, this, uh, this 14 pound. Well, it's a replica. The fish that was caught in the picture above from Vance in Florida, that's 14 pounds. This guy is, um, the replica is as big as the taxidermist could find, but it's not quite a 14 pound replica. That's on our 11 inch bull shad and that's how it was caught. We've got Mike's fishing rods in here from Dobbins. It's what we all use here at the shop and a lot of you guys are starting to use them. It is rated two to eight ounces and it takes every bit of that. So if you guys can, uh, can by chance pick up one of these, it's well worth it. It is a fabulous rod. Now I have got a little bit of black in the chamber and I'm just going to, on some of these that I can still see the horns, I'm just going to go over where I was before and try and make sure that I hit the same mark again. And just, and there you go. Long horns. And then on the ones that don't have them, it's fairly easy. And then you get that nice little outline on your stencil. The biggest thing is not to um, be blasting the paint. You kind of want to bring your PSI down. And for me, I usually work in the 10 to 15 PSI range. And that's just a pressure reminder when you're de doing detail work to slow it down. And then you just want to hit that airbrush on top of the stencil with a 90 degree angle. So you want to be like right on top of it. Because if you come at an angle, you're going to get marks underneath because usually the stencils are somewhat flimsy. And then when you pick that up, you get cool little horns down there. And then the last thing I'll do is just put my initials on the bottom. Just like that. It is a Uniball Vision Elite Medium Point. Uniball Vision Elite Medium Point. I'll still get questions. I know it. Especially when I say it. You guys like to ask that question even when I've mentioned it. So just sign in my name. Well, my initials. There we go. And I think that's all five. And that's the last five to do with that batch. So now we are on to this craw crank. And we're going to do the stencils by hand because you guys want to learn how to do that. And a lot of you have said that you've never been able to cut a stencil that you like. Um, a lot of the hard stencils out there, while they are very good, it's kind of cookie cutter. It's just like everybody else is painting. So I'm going to give you how I do it. You're welcome to interpret that however you want. Let's go. No, we haven't time warp back into the 70s. This is one of those, um, it's actually a program called Electric Sheep, and it's a kind of a collective because you can change interactive programming with the community live time. So people are actually changing this as it goes. You can log on and right now I'm just checking mail for a second. Oh, that's my puppy. So if I'm thinking about what a crawfish looks like, I want a collar that kind of goes like this. 
and then I want a large fin. You see a lot of that. And then a couple of smaller segments going back. Obviously, if you wanted to do this the right way, you would have this on a longer bill, you would have the pincers back here, and you'd put the eyes up here, and I have seen that done. Technically, you could build this bait to where your flippers are back here, and, and I've done that in a video, I'm almost certain. If I haven't, I'm gonna have to, you guys are gonna, I'm sure you'll correct me. I don't know why I can't complete a sentence this morning. It's just the way it is. But you could put like little 3.5 millimeter or 4.5 millimeter eyes, black eyes, after you're done. If you painted it this way, eh, you kind of already set up for the eyes being here. So we're just going to go with the traditional style. But you want a collar, a larger segment, and a couple of smaller segments. You can either choose to paint the bill or leave the bill blank. I'm going to leave the bill blank on this one. But normally what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of... I do it on dark stuff, but since we have some VMC stuff out this morning, because I just raided my tackle box, I'm going to do an outline of basically what I want in this, and then we'll take it from there. So for coming down here, I want something that looks a little bit like this. We'll be able to add this as the segments. It's a little bit shorter on one end. And then on this end, I'm actually going to come in and build out this. So this is going to get cut. This is going to be the collar. So then you pretty much just have one piece. You could probably get away with doing it a little bit larger. Most crankbaits can handle that. One larger side, one smaller side. And this can kind of be specific to what you want to do with it. So that's what we're looking at. And then on this one, you would build the collar right about there. So just showing you what we've done here. We're gonna we're gonna do a couple little tricks on this as well. You, you could probably get away with using some sharper scissors and if you're not able to stay exactly along the lines that you've made, it's okay. It will still work for you. So I'm just... Now remember, we're going to take this as the collar. back here and just finish this up and you can kind of move around with this my biggest problem this morning is that I don't have any sharp exacto blades left I can get close but I think I'm probably gonna have to punch oh no we did all right so that's kind of what we've got and remember these lines will go on the segments will go on after we do our color so, this is how that collar is going to fit, and then you just kind of come down and run your pieces like that. Now, there's a couple other things that you can do with this. I am going to go with this larger one. Something that I've always done, just to kind of trick it out a little bit more, is you can kind of pull notches out of this. And that kind of gives you a little bit more of a natural look. Don't have to go crazy with it. So now you can see that notch. Maybe do one more longer segment. Maybe do one in here. Now, I don't know if you saw what I just realized was going on. So, these VMC things, a lot of the times, they have hook holders in them. If you can see that. But there's actually a slit in this paper. 
kind of transferred into the stencil. So I've got a little bit of a gap here that I need to go ahead and tape up. So really that's, that's just aesthetics and you want it to last longer. So I'm just gonna rip off a little tiny piece of tape. And bring it along like that. And then bring it into the other side. And there you have it. No harm, no foul. But it's just going to give you a cleaner look. It's not going to be all jacked up when you try and work with that. Cut any excess off. And now we have a fairly decent, I would say it's a reasonable adaptation of what a crawl segment can look like. And then you've got some concave and convex shapes in there. That's pretty much all there is to it. It doesn't have to be exactly like this. In fact, I encourage you to kind of make it your own, but this is just a basic style that I use. We're gonna put it onto the bait. So the next biggest challenge is to try and figure out what colors we want this crawl. We've already got a white base coat and we've got our clear coat. Now we get to figure out what color we want this to look like. If I'm going with something that's here in Georgia, it's probably gonna be like a rusty green. What's rusty green? That's rust color and like an olive drab. So my two primary colors on this one are gonna be this olive, and you can see the actual color on the bottom, and this rust orange. Both of these I've mixed. I'm not gonna go through the proportions in this particular video. Um, just mix a color that you feel appropriate for a crawfish, or you can do an abstract crawl. When I put these on, we'll start with my orange, go light to dark. And we're probably gonna add a couple of accent colors in as well. Make sure my camera's positioned well for you guys. So I'm gonna start and you're going to see where the uh, where the texture in here comes into play after just a little bit. It's going to be one of the last things we do with this bait. It's probably good for orange. Now I'm going to fill in everything else with that green. And you're going to see when we're done, you can look down here, that's pretty much the color that we're going for. Just that dull green, olive, and you don't have to, this isn't a coloring book, you don't have to stay in the lines, you can get a little bit over. Get as close as you can. I'm intentionally leaving a couple of white areas on the back, and I'll show you why here in just a second. I left a couple of areas on the back of the craw white specifically so I could add just a couple of accent areas to it. I do see this color blue on more crawls than I used to and I can only say that I attribute what the shell color looks like on a crawl to a lot of different conditions. The pH balance in the water, what they're eating, um, what area they're in, whether it's highlands or lowlands the time of year it is, whether they've gone through a mulch or not. So I'm just going to add a little bit of accenting to this. Just in a couple of random places because in nature, unless it's something that repeats a Fibonacci series, like leaf patterns and flower patterns and things like that, 
a crawfish pattern can be pretty random. The last accent color that I'm going to add for now is a Wicked Detail Carmine. It's a very dark, deep red. And I just want to put something a little bit bolder on the nose and throat area and maybe the underside of the tail. If I can get it to come out of the bottle. There we go. Just a drop will do. Don't need much. I'm going to add it there, maybe there, that's it, we've got our basic crawl. Now that our color's on here, I am going to give this a basic heat set. Now we get to play with our new stencil that we've cut. I generally don't use black anymore unless I'm detailing something like a crawl and even then a lot of times I'll do a wicked detail black magenta in the place of a black. But since we're on camera and it's easier to show you black, that's what I'm going to show you. So remember I talked about the collar. Every crayfish has got a collar. We're just going to lay that on like that. Now, I'm going to add some markings here to the top. So now we've outlined what we want to do and where we want those lines to go. I'm going to go to the left side of the crawl first. And the first thing we're going to do is finish that collar. Just going to lay that in. And now we're going to bring our crawl stencil down which one looks good in which direction I think we'll do this side because we have the outline on the top it makes it easier to do the segments on the side I've been doing them for so long now sometimes it's easy to forget to tell you guys that's that that's how you set up and get it even Flare this out, kind of bring this down, now we have number one. Number two we'll do the same way, make sure we're lined up with the top and just slowly bring it down. And then run this around. And bring that notch up. This one, same way. This one I want just a little bit longer than the other one. So I'll start up here. Then I'm going to run it down the side a little bit longer. Like that. And then on the back one, we can kind of just eyeball it. I am using the other part of the stencil just because, just because, because it looks a little bit cooler. It looks a little bit more natural to me. So now we've got that basic on there. We're going to turn around and do the other side. 
Same thing, just this way. We want to finish that collar. And then use everything we have. We're going to flip it over to the other side so we can get the same outline going back down. Make sure we line it up. Next one down. I'm trying to get you guys in a good camera angle and light to see what the heck I'm doing. That might be a little bit better for you guys. want that to line up with that first one. Make sure we can see the first one. There we go. This one's a little bit shorter. This one I want to go a little bit longer. Just to kind of offset. And then this one, we're going to do the same thing that we did on the other side. On the underside, we're going to push our stencil this way. We're going to make the line where the shadow is going back towards the tail. And we want more of these on the belly than we did segments on the front, on the back side. Now, I'm not doing the entire way, just because I've got some curvature here that I just kind of didn't want to deal with. So, the way we're going to do this... Let's kind of add that hook to where they line up like this. See how I'm doing this? Kind of gives a natural contour. Same thing on the other side. And not only does it give definition, but at least to me, it might not to you, but to me it looks a little bit more natural because you have a round object. So you're not going to have perfectly straight lines, if that makes sense. I hope it does. Certainly worth discussing. So now we have these, got our lines in, I'm going to darken around the eyes just a little bit, now we're going to try and do a little bit more of a, of a trick type deal with some of this, there's a couple of ways I could do it. Um, I could blow white across the back, but I think that's going to spray out too much. So what I'm going to try and do, as I clear out this chamber, we'll talk about it. I'm going to get a partially dry brush and some white paint. And I'm going to try and do just the texture and not all of them. I'm just going to try and hit a little bit of it. Now that I'm here at the finishing desk, I've got a flat brush and I'm going to try ever so slightly. I'll also mention that it's a stiff brush. So you don't want a whole lot of flexibility in this if you're going to try and do it this way. Sorry for my reach in the one camera. All right, we are using a stiff flat brush. I've got a little cup of white paint, probably way too much white paint. 
and I want a stiffer brush because I really I don't want a whole lot of flexibility. I don't want the brush tip going onto the base coat. I just want to kind of keep it above and just hit some of the the higher spots. And I'm even going to get a lot of the paint off on my fingers and then just barely come and try and get a little bit of lighter texture on this. And it is working. Just don't want to go haywire. So the biggest thing is just to not get too heavy handed with the brush. Just lightly come across and add that white texture in. And it looks pretty cool. I like the way it's turning out. I think it looks pretty natural. And then on occasion, I'm putting too much paint down and I have to take it up. I think for these, I want really wild looking eyes. So let me see what I've got in a six or a six five. Probably a six five is better. Although I'm pretty low on my Jetsons. But we're gonna see. Get this out of the way. So yeah, I'm uh, more than not, I'm fairly happy with how this came out. Here's a close-up picture of what I was able to accomplish. And I would like to know your thoughts on this. I would like to know how you do it different. If you like what I did, if you think it's not worth the time and effort to do something like this. I mean, obviously, it w would kind of be a one-off. I don't know that I'd want to put this in production. Um, but I do like how it came out. I'm going to dip it and see what it does there. See if this brightens up a little bit now that I've got little white specks all over it. So this is what we've got today. Bring it on to this better camera. Not bad. A lot of time and effort. Is it worth it? Uh, it depends on what you want to do with it. Something I wanted to experiment with. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks as always for joining me here on the channel. I hope I've been able to teach you guys a couple of things and cheers. Happy casting and I'll see you on the next video.